Janet Stevens, who was born in Cincinnati in 1912, was the only child of Will Henry Stevens and, and Grace Hall Stevens. She was somewhat, I think, a doted upon child, particularly by her father. Janet's mother and Will Henry Stevens' wife, Grace Hall, was, by Janet's description, a very proper lady from a rather Victorian family who had a very strong will to see her daughter reared in a certain manner. Grace was a maker and an artist in her own right, a very fine artist who was a decorator at Rookwood Pottery. And then after Rookwood and after marrying Will Henry Stevens, was living in New Orleans and was making raised silver hollowware vessels. She was very good. She made bowls and things, huge things. I didn't, I like working with smallness. I don't know why, but I did. Oh, I think she was better than I was, all the way around. <laughs> she did not wish to displease her mother at all, but I think in the end, her own individual will usually won out with her father's approval. I think he was sort of proud and surprised that I could tackle some of the things I did, but I don't think he thought them gorgeous or anything. I don't know. They weren't. I wish they had done more. Mother was, she was very good. Will and his daughter were very excited to be in the mountains. And that love of that vernacular architecture and the love of the, the view, the vista, the, the woods, is something that lives on very much, very strongly in his daughter. She is reported to be the first woman to have climbed all the peaks in the Blue Ridge Mountains that are in excess of 6,000 feet. Sometime around 1912, Stevens went to Washington and he saw the Freer Collection uh, when this was a, just being recently shown. And he saw Sung paintings, Chinese paintings, which influenced him, or which he was very taken with. And he also would have seen that time some of Whistler's paintings, which were also there, which are very much influenced, of course, by uh, Japanese art. And I think he knew about Whistler and had already admired Whistler's design and sense of design. So between those two, he, he got an idea of two different kinds of Asian art. Here I found the thing that I had been aware of in nature. I couldn't look at Sung without realizing that it had the same kind of philosophy that I discovered in Walt Whitman. The experience sank deep, but it didn't influence me directly in my work for some time. I didn't try to adapt it in any way. I'm not very good at that, not clever at imitating. I suppose it's been a blessing in the long run, but it's been an uphill job for me all the way. He, he was always sort of fascinated with, with Oriental things and so forth. Maybe the way the composition is very close to the foreground, so to speak, and a kind of just suggestion of, of things rather than clearly spelling them out is, is part of this influence, I think, of a feeling for the way Oriental things were done. His work changed drastically after that point, and he left that American Impressionist period, not totally, um, but he, he started that process of leaving it um, at that point. And I think his library grew, and, and he started reading Chinese philosophy and Oriental philosophy in general. What I find interesting is if you look at the critics who wrote about his work in the 1920s and in the 1930s and even into the 40s, that they always mention in a general way that 
there's something like a Japanese quality about it or, or an Oriental quality about it. And this also perhaps goes back to uh, Arthur Wesley Dow, who in his discussion of design and composition used the Japanese principles of notan, of tone and color uh, and so forth, so that this is a thread that weaves through what that generation of artists were thinking about, people who were influenced by Dow. In 1920, Ellsworth Woodward, who was the head of the art department of Newcomb College in New Orleans, offered Will Stevens a permanent position. He accepted and began teaching in February 1921. Because of their work at Rookwood Pottery, Stevens and his wife Grace were clearly steeped in the ideas of Arthur Wesley Dow. That, no doubt, influenced Woodward's decision to hire Stevens. The principles of teaching and design that Arthur Wesley Dow taught, which was very much a part of the way they taught design at Newcomb, was to look at your environment, then simplify designs. And also, Dow had a kind of international approach. He was looking at designs in medieval art, in Renaissance art, in Asian art, um, and, and finding the common qualities in those designs, a sort of more, in a sense, formal, um, formal looking at principles of design rather than the strict observation, the, the kind of academic teaching where you strictly observe the environment and record what you see. He was a teacher that didn't really teach a lot. You know, he didn't say, why don't you do this? Or, why don't you do that? Uh, uh, he just kept track and, you know, he, he, it was like a teaching that was non-teaching. And it was wonderful. I took a pastel landscaping uh, class from him. And in that class, we learned to make our own pastels, which was great fun. We'd go on ventures every week, someplace different, and paint and draw with Will Stevens. And it was uh, one of the things I looked forward to and even appreciated in those years when you don't usually appreciate those things. All I can tell you is that I think everybody was just happy with this quiet uh, whole setup. Our excursions consisted of about 10 or 12 students. You get on the ferry boat and cross the river. And in West Wego, there was uh, a little bayou and little fishing cottages uh, on the bayou. It was a pleasant excursion as well as a wonderful place to get material to paint. That was one of uh, the favorite things of Mr. Stevens' teaching, to go out on location and paint and draw. There are reports of going out into the bayous to paint, and there are a number of paintings that are, that are bayou scenes. He would befriend people and stay with them and, and become acquainted with them without ever becoming friends with them. I kind of sweat when I look at his New Orleans pieces because I think he really brings in the humidity. The colors tend to dull a little bit more. And I think his subject matter tends to be a little bit more the human element because of what's immediately around him. He had so many purest works in the mountains, but in New Orleans there was very little of that. It was always railroad tracks or churches and buildings and th that sort of thing. In the summer, he would leave New Orleans with his wife, Grace, and daughter, Janet, get on the train, and he would come to the mountains. He would either be around Dillard, Georgia, the Hambage Center area in Northeast Georgia. He was in 
number of places in Western North Carolina.